Oh, there, there, there we go. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, see me, see me. <laughs> oh, Kimbo, How Kimbo, 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 to Tata Kimbo. Zambi, the moment is here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, all you can say is praises, praises to the Most High for Hallelujah. this opportunity and uh, allowing us this great opportunity for you to share with Banabeto, you know, love from Kenya to the U.S., U.S. to the love, (laughs) U.S. US back home, as as, as we would say. So um, I've been trying to practice your second name the entire week, not to butcher it. I hope I don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually Kosa. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's Corsa. It's got the click. Yeah. Ah, so that it tre ok the way is solid. Yeah, yeah. It means uh, on cho- chosen one, the Most High. Because I used to have the the Hebrew Israelite version, but he said this is more like it. Alila, Kembo Kembo na tatanzambi mpungu tolendo. Hallelujah, Kembo Kembo, kumfumo kakuisa. So um, we always, uh, whenever I invite anybody here, we want to know your your walk, how how you've come to know that you are Bana Beto, Bana Bamuntu. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, and, and that journey. Well, all right. Well, CME family, Bana Beto, scattered across the earth. Um, as you know, I'm Trey Oketiri Solele on, on my YouTube channel. Um, I, uh, Salbona, uh, Betuabu, um, Kiambote. So my journey is a very long one, actually. I'm, 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 I, I can say my age, I'm 47 years old. <laughs> uh, I had an experience back in 1995 when things started to really change for me to realize that something wasn't quite right with the world. Um, I actually had a vision when I was a teenager because I was into, um, sorry, I know I, this is a different camera <laughs> than my other one, but um, I had a journey, sorry. Okay, now I, I gotta look forward this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's all well, it's all well. It's all well. It gets a little bright. Can you see me okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I had a, my journey started when I was um, younger, my 20s. Um, I was really, I watched Shaka Zulu quite a bit when I was younger. It came out back when I was, it first came out when I was a kid. Um, I was in, uh, in the 80s. And for some reason, that Bayete and Kosi really used to hit me. And, you know, but then I, you know, I knew something, the movie was great. I just knew something didn't seem quite right about it. I said, I can't be all true. But what was funny is shortly thereafter, I received a vision uh, from the Most High that I would be doing something in the future that I wasn't even aware of. So in 95, I had a, you know, I was dealing with a lot of frustration. I was in college, wasn't doing too well. Um, reached out to the Most High in an in a unorthodox way <laughs> and uh, find myself nose to nose with the dragon. In a, in a, in a, in a, and uh, I was saved from that. And the Most High wanted to show me, he says, you're going to show the world that it's not what you think it is. And that happened to me the day before Oklahoma City blew up. Ooh. And what was weird about it is something told me that it didn't play out the way they were, t- they were t- showing us. So as I grew, I came in contact with um, a Native American whose actually name is Golo. <laughs> so I, knew, I knew there was a coincidence there now in my awakening because Golo means power, <laughs> okay? And he was sharing me because he was ex-military. He was sharing me with some things. And that's why I started to learn. That's a good thing. I wanted to be in the Air Force Academy and it's a good thing I didn't get in. I started to realize now what our military is for. Not not to say I don't support those who are in it, but the problem is it's those who run it that are that are deceiving. So what I learned was growing up, I, I took African studies in college. I was really into the gorillas in the mist. Um, they, I, I remember watching that um, particular 
um, presentation that they met in my college. And for some reason, it hit me kind of hard. I remember watching The Lion King for the first time and I cried with the entrance song. And I was like, wow, why did I just cry for the entrance song? It was kind of weird. Because it was like, I guess, was my soul was calling for something and I didn't even know the connection. It um, always has this... Uh... It has this effect on Banabeto. Right. And so it was like, wow. I mean, it was like, I, that's that movie kind of stuck with me. Like, I knew it was symbolic, even when I was in college when it came out, that it meant something that I'm not sure what it meant. Now I have a lot of clarity as the most I continued to wake me up. He showed me a vision. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of struggling back and forth, fighting my, my calling. Um, and my and a, and a Maliki appeared to my mom saying I need to get back on track, which was kind of a trip. And that's when I learned that I was protected in a way that I didn't know. The devil kept making attempts. And um, I wrote a book about the end of times, not realizing it was connected to a vision that I had about my life. For some odd reason, that was a connection to me in the days of Noah. So um, as I learned to grow in my knowledge I, there was a lady who came to our church when I was growing up. It was a Methodist church. We started talking about how most of the Jews were black in her studies in Israel. And it hit me like, wait a minute. Do y'all not hear what this lady is saying? <laughs> Do y'all not? And I started to kind of get my frustration. And then I started to really um, try to, f I didn't research like I should have, but I started to realize something was not right. And for some reason, even through all my pitfalls and everything is like, I was a coach for a while. And of course, my biggest problem was my addiction to women that the most high knew I was struggling with uh, uh, pornography and things like that, that that was what the devil was using to keep me grounded and not into bring, coming to the truth. And as I began to break free of it somewhat, um, an awakening started to happen. And what was funny is it started with the fact that I moved to another city from where I grew up. Because from Colorado Springs, I moved to Pueblo. And something about the place seemed kind of odd, you know, because it was like going back in time a little bit. And I knew I was an outsider. And I noticed that my wife, who I married at that time, had a different perspective on Christianity that I wasn't aware of because she didn't always believe everything that was said. But she just kind of went with it because I was still kind of trapped. So then um, what happened to me is we started going to a church here in town where it was an evangelical church where I started to notice that we were praying for the Jews. And I'm like, why does this not seem right? You know, it just didn't feel right. And I remember one day I used to participate and this lady came in and she blows a shofar. <clears throat> when she blew the shofar, <laughs> It was like, whoa, something just jumped out of me, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like she woke me up and I started to realize something is, and that's when the most I started to speak to me in ways that, you know, um, you're more than what you think you are. It's kind of like that Simba moment, you know, when Rafiki <laughs> comes and hits them over the head and it's like, hey, hey, remember who you are. And it was like, okay, now, I started to hear scripture differently. I started to learn that it was taught backwards. Um, people thought I was crazy, of course, because I start I, when I first did, I did my first real fast ever, and it was like, pfft. and around that time, the devil tried to do something. As I now learn, he keeps trying to do. He tried to start a war because the awakening was starting to happen. And I ran into a guy, no joke, man. He had them one and said he knew it was about Africa. And they literally tried to kill this man, you know, and the most high stopped it. He warned me about talking about the false messiah and the system saying, but then the most high said, No, you are covered. You are blocked. You can you can do this. So this is when I started to realize what was going on with Freemasonry and all the secret societies, who the false messiah really was, because that pastor I was with, he kind of chastised me about it. And the most high said, I'm gonna show you. Who the false messiah is so then through that time frame um i grew i understood who the hebrew i found out who the hebrew israelites were but i wasn't jiving with the doctrine completely 
Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that happened in my awakening was my the most high had me come to a song I heard when I was a teenager called Oshé Baba. And as I started to sing it, I cried. Because it was like, we already knew. When I got to that part where it says, we already knew in the song, um, I'm like, oh man, we already knew. And so... And you know, they will brand these things right. as uh, Negro uh, hymns, uh, Negro spirituals, mm. and all that kind yeah. of music. But we realized that this music is uh, a lot of what was still left on the continent. You know, things like right. Kumbaya, you know, right. Kambaya, Kumbaya you know. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is elder or Mkongo in Swahili, we would say Mkongwe, which is the ancient of days, the uh -huh. self existent uh -huh. one. Wow, and so to cut it a little bit short, I know we, we got probably pressed for time, but no, no, um, no, take your time, take your time. We are here okay. to learn, take your time, <laughs> take your time. All right, so <clears throat> what started to happen is, um, because my parents are from the Caribbean. And I always knew that I loved the music that they played in the Virgin Islands. And I, I never could understand why I was so attracted to that music because most most American kids like the hip hop. Like I did I did grow up on hip hop, but the rap music that I grew up on was about Africa. People didn't understand that they were actually talking more about Africa back then. And I remember when Chuck D used to do a song called Fear of a Black Planet. And I was like, yeah, and he's talk about how the slave masters and everything was going on, and Hollywood really he really got slammed for a lot of things that he did because he was actually waking up consciousness even then. And I always knew there was something about Africa that was kind of weird that I didn't quite understand, but I knew there was a, a reason for it. And what happened to me was the most I reminded me of something that I saw when I was younger was we went to this um organization i used to be like i call a peer counselor in high school and we went to listen to this guy he, he played an african drum he was doing you know a talking drum all of that and it was for some reason it felt like power when we were singing and so i learned coming up that as i started to get closer and closer to the awakening all of a sudden, I was watching a brother, um, you know, probably know the heard of the Iskar couple. I started watching them, but then all of a sudden, um, I, the most high said, look up the song Oshe Baba. So I did, and the, and the guy started singing it with the Caribbean beat, and I was like, wow. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, no? Ding, ding, and ding. Then, <laughs> ding, ding. And then, um, for some reason, something said, look up Bayete and Kosi. So I, went, I tried to spell it. So I found a song, Bayete and Kosi, and it was like, oh, man. Bayete and Kosi Yami is praising the Most High. And so they were lying all this time about what was really being said in Africa. And so it was like, ding, 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 you know, wake <laughs> up, wake up. And as I started to learn from Yanat, Brother Yanate Chilombo, uh, Masia Kadima, uh, Mikhail Massa, Pastor Mel, and then I learned about the third secret of Fatima. And what was funny was, before I learned about Simon Toko, I was already starting to think that way. And prior to my knowledge of him, I had an encounter with the harlot. And what was funny about that was um, we, um, oh, another, another person is joining us? Okay. Yeah. Um, for Q&A purposes. No, that's fine. Um, I got you. So what happened was when I had that encounter, it was like they were begging because they knew something was coming because it's in the heart it's going to burn and my biggest contest that i was fighting was a, a certain preacher or, or preachers that i was dealing with and then of course i was on twitter and i was on facebook and i was always catching flack and then all of a sudden when i heard kimbo kimbo natatanzambi yamazulu it was like whoa something just hit me with those brothers that were saying that and that's how i knew um, and when they mentioned about what happened with King Kong and how that was a mockery, I was like, now that makes sense. And when I looked at the year that the first King Kong movie came out, it was 1933, which 33 was the age of the Messiah, but also it's a mockery year for the secret societies. And I was like, cause I, I learned the numerology things. And that's when I started to realize, okay, they're trying to hide something about us. 
And then when I learned about the connection of the 400 years, it was like, okay, now I get it. That's what they've been talking about 400 years. The old scriptures are connected. And I wanted to read a scripture that kind of ties into that real quick. Yeah, let's jump um, right into it. Um, now, I'm going to go to the King James Version. It's Luke um, chapter 21, verse 24, I believe. Yeah. One second. Let me pull it up. And this really hit me as well. So Luke 21, verse 24 says, And they they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem, or Salama, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time that the Gentiles be fulfilled. I understand now that this scripture is talking about Bantus and that where this location is, is actually in Africa and Palestine is a rouge. <laughs> the Negev, the wilderness. Yeah. You know, yes. And interesting, you should mention that, Trey. Um, this is where a lot of our brothers are stuck in uh, Hebrew Israelite movements. They still have attachment to the Negev. Uh, the, we, we understand of the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere. So now then there's another division I'm noticing, and that is those that are of the Northern Kingdom, those that have come to the awakening through the Northern Kingdom, and those that have come through the Southern Kingdom. The same message is being spoken. There's only, there's, um, they, they seem to disagree with uh, the H. The H is more Yiddish. What, what would you say about that? Because I've listened to a lot of your lessons and mm -hmm. so kindly, what would you have to say about that? The biggest problem with unity is pride <laughs> and knowledge. So the, the, the most high says knowledge makes you puffed up. Unfortunately, that works to the advantage of those who try to hide the truth. Because if because they used one of the things that happened with Willie Lynch is we had certain characteristics that he used against us ourselves. We were, were the reason what what got us kicked out of our land was our pride and our unwillingness to continue our unity, and that's what allowed our kings to um, make deals with the colonizers, and we actually we had the Moandan Semi and by through but christians don't know we already had the holy spirit we had them one and sending so they had to make up lies and say we were heathens so when we received catholicism we actually lost the power that we had already had in ourselves so the problem is is that throughout the whole colonizer system by everything being taught backwards that we became the tail and not the head just like scripture says we were able to be manipulated our interpretation of scripture. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, as Christians, we believe in that the Gentiles, we were Gentiles and the real Jews were actually the people who denied their heritage in what you now call Israel and those people there, mm -hmm. which are actually converts and not, they're, they're actually Jews by um, conversion Converses. and tradition, not actual blood. And they don't understand because the, the Ashkenazi Jews if you go in your scriptures, are children of Japheth. So they cannot be Shemites. The only way they can, can actually connect to Shem is through Esau, who's cut off. Okay? So um, they hid the identity of, the, of us as Shemites because we had the name of the Father in our original language, Yakongo or Yaya. And that's why they needed to change our names, especially in America, because our names were in the scriptures. And you can even see there's a controversy now where the scriptures had to be rewritten because one of the things that started with one of the, fla the slavery boats, and this is why we were now able to read the Bible, mm -hmm. is we saw our names in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we would be like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Somebody's lying, you know? And, and, and that's what okay. people don't know. And so what we're having a problem with in our unity today is because we're not allowing ourselves to put ourselves aside and let the Moanda really teach us, or we've been assuming that we have the true Moanda. You know, like Brother Mikhail Masa always says is that, 
you know, and, and the Most High shared this with me. How can you be awakened by your oppressor? Because one of the things that because one of the things that happened with the, especially with the Hebrew Israelite movement is they were taught from, from Ashkenazi Jews mm -hmm. how to read the scrolls. Well, they don't understand the Ashkenazi Jews are basically control um, the United States. They've controlled that system. They ran the slavery. Okay, if you look at the history, you can they can pull it up. Um, in the island of Curacao, that's very evident. One of the ship's captains uh, during the slave trade, he had over a hundred ships. He's buried in a Jewish grave. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you're learning <clears throat> the history of the truth, and, and see, for me, it was a way. What I now learn is because of my knowledge of now Simon Toku and Simon Kimbangu and what they accomplished, the purpose of the different black movements in America was to hide those people and Simon Pavi. Okay. Kimpavita. Um, Kimpavita, yes. They were meant to hide those people, okay? Because they were bringing about truths and Isaka. abilities. Isaka and they, Zulu. Isaka, yeah, they, they, like, I heard there was even a prophecy about him. They told the story wrong. He found out that they lied about the scriptures, that he knew they were teaching him backwards. And that's why they had his people Judas him, <laughs> okay? It's, the Rome, the, yeah. it's a way it is a way of 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 the mundele we've seen this they they will infiltrate what they right. did 1600 the kingdom of mani congo stands strong the northern right. kingdom is solele not israel right it's solele right. is not wrestling against their mighty one the mighty one of iburahama isaka and yakubi right. uh, they come, they send their, their, their Portuguese missionaries, infiltrate, learn the culture, change the language, uh, make sure there's no, there's no record of that. Whatever was right. left they, uh, in Kumka, Free State uh, South Africa, they, they took that and they tell us they were written in Paleo Hebrew, yet we know the name of the Most High, the name that he gave to Massa. I am is is, is so the nini, same. Nani. Yes, so yeah. nini na nini. And I then am. they train, and then in the Yiddish they this translated into a higher a share a higher. Higher because they flipped, they flipped and it their start, it's spelled with an e sound, but then with the Hebrew is like they change it to the a because of the ah. Yes, so which they don't understand a higher a share. Yeah, a higher a share a higher is still Yiddish, which they flipped it from sonini na nini. Okay because that's what we called him that's what abana really called him that's what Ab abraham really called him was and so in, in the scattering of the languages sorry I, I i have to bring this in because it's something every banabeto needs to understand when any any anybody in the in the caribbean in the american in the afroasiatic and everywhere they they want to learn about the bantu they go to wikipedia they'll find that there are about 200 uh, 2500 bantu dialects but today we are telling them that in the dialects it's still the same because if you go to kikongo which was the main uh, actually not even kikongo kikongo is uh, lingala is actually a, a blend of what they did we have the actual language right. is kiluba Right. Well, no, you're not. You're not the gave the explanation. Is Congololo? Congololo. Is the That's what Adama and Elwa spoke. Yes. Okay. Um. In in Congololo, you'll find that uh, we have the name Ngai. You know, they'll say uh, Bolinga Nangai, the love of Ngai. Yeah? I right. am. I am. Which is in in you come to Kenya, the the Bantus that live by the mountain, which there's a high possibility it's Mount Sinai. Right. Uh, they use Ngai for the most high. So in your understanding, Trey, because I've seen you teach and you're a plethora of information. How do we make those that are on your side understand that it's just one language, all they did is scatter it and try to fake that with the Babylonian scattering of the languages? And okay, so... Just to give an, I, I, I did a video about this, and this is what revealed to me to the Moana and Semi. Um, before the days of Noah, and Amasa does a, he's going to actually do a really, he's going, he's putting out a book that's going to really show this. Um, 
our people were of the light. Okay, the Banabetu were of the light. Adama was pure light. Him and his Awa, there existed. Now, this is going to really cause confusion for some people. The Lilith character did exist. Mm -hmm. Did not want to bow down to Adama. Became a demon. <laughs> it, was, it was just the first spirit of the harlot. Okay, because at that time, Shatani had already fallen because he did not want to bow before the image of the Most High because he was a Maliki. He said, I'm a Maliki. This is a Muntu. Why am I going to bow before a Muntu? Okay. So the Most High was like, no. Then he cast him out with the other, the third of the heavens that came down. So at that point, Satani made a pact to go against the Most High's image and his throne. Okay. He wanted to create his kingdom, so he started to destroy the land. The Most High put us in the garden. We were protected. He already began the process of changing things on here on earth. And so what happened was when um, Cain was born, after the fall, Satan used him and that spirit to go against Adama. So even then, the languages started to be tainted because of the fact that there was a separation between the man and the, the the lineage that became Seth. Uh -huh. Cain and Seth the lineage sons of separated. Muntu. The sons right. of Muntu. Right. And so what happened in that regard is, like I said, nothing's under the sun. The world started to really create monstrosities. And now scientists, of course, call them dinosaurs or bohemians or whatever you want to call them. But the fallen angels started to really mess up the world because of their anger against the Most High. So the lineage of Seth was really purified, even though there was still some sin in there. And their, their role was to get us to where the Most High's promise of the, of the coming of Kuswa Kongo, the coming of Isaiah Kongo. Satan did not want that to happen. So he did everything within his power to annihilate that lineage of Seth that was purified after what happened with Cain and Abel. So what happened there is we were, we were in the, of course, the leopard skin. We were, that, that was a lineage that was kept through down to Adama. We had the, like the, um, like the Zulu look, the Zulu looking the things. Fierce. Yeah. But Cain wanted to be modernized with the fallen angels because they taught them all the modernization um, Tubal came with building cities, you know, all these different things, right? Weapons and everything. But then the Most High said, "Okay, this world is corrupt now, and I see my my um, the one that's going to really be my um, chosen is Noah and his family." Mm -hmm. Now here's where Hollywood told you the truth with, within a lie in the Book of Anoka or Enoch. So what happened was they flipped the story where the watchers helped him build the ark <laughs> when it was really <laughs> Maliki's the most high sent against the watchers and against the spirit of Cain that wanted to ambush and destroy the ark to stop the coming of Kuswa Kongo. Okay, so we fought against them and then the flood came and then of course he was saved. Well, when they came out, they were ready again okay to start it all over that's why it says before and after so the so that was why it was important to begin to start to disrupt us so the spirit that yafeth and and cam or ham started to re-inter interact with these fallen angels again mm -hmm. which wanted to once again conquer the earth shem was a little bit more leery but his offspring wasn't so by the time we get to nimrod Okay, Nimrod was born, uh, he was a demigod. People don't understand that. His mother was not of this earth, but his father was Cush. Okay, so he saw himself as a mighty man in this world. And he brought all the children of, 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 of um, Noah together, which wasn't supposed to be, to build his kingdom up, to try to go and destroy Tatanzambi. Okay, well, the way he was able to do that is he was, he was given the clothing of Adama that made him invincible, that was snuck